as most of you know, I'm a big, you know, dance music fan, go to a lot of raves and whatnot. Um, obviously, I'm also a DJ on the side as a hobby. And also, hopefully sometime in the future, it will become a profession, but I'm enjoying it as a hobby. And it's probably one of the best hobbies a man can do, with the exception of golf and maybe playing, you know, five a side power league or something. But I think DJing is pretty decent, especially with places like Pirate um, Studios out there where you can go and, you know, dance and hang out and have a good time. So I'm definitely a fan of that. But one place I definitely am a fan of also is live streaming platform Hall, which is obviously located in Berlin, which I kind of discovered around the pandemic time because that's when they basically didn't launch. But they, I think, were really influential and really kind of important in that time because if anything it feels like again from the outside looking in they did a good job in terms of holding that scene together because i remember reading loads of articles like quite a few actually maybe a couple on the podcast maybe one from like the site called ex berliner as well where basically they profiled and highlighted a lot of the people in the scene who are really struggling mentally during the pandemic and during the lockdown and not being able to go to raves not being able to just go outside not be able to kind of do their art and create be around their friends it became a really isolating and lonely time and it felt like berlin for the most part suffered quite a lot because you know you'd imagine that city with some exception but for the most part most people do go there to kind of you know creatively liberate themselves and also to kind of go and go balls deep and dive themselves in a deep end when it comes to dance music and club culture so to not have that must have been brutal especially when you're in a place that is essentially a 24-hour city where you can party from like friday to monday with no stop maybe you know maybe more days also um but I think Hall did a good job to kind of plug that gap in terms of providing people a platform to kind of showcase their skills, to connect with the local community and still feel like they're part of and they're DJing and whatnot. So I thought that was pretty cool. And also I did a good job to kind of regionalize and sort of specialize that platform because I feel like Boiler Room, for whatever reason, you know, it's gone global now. And obviously it doesn't necessarily represent a particular area anymore. It's just more sort of a global thing. And there's other places that also do the local thing in terms of Lot Radio New York and whatnot. But I don't think Berlin ever had one. And for whatever reason, Hall came around and kind of grabbed that. I was able to kind of claim it. And so far, they've done a really good job. Even though they get people coming in from all over the place. I think I emailed them once before when they were kind of small to kind of get a set on there, which kind of, you know, the email exchange was good. But then over time, because I didn't reply back in time and whatnot, you know, it kind of deaded out. And, you know, now they're super massive. I'm assuming they're probably flooded with requests. So I'm probably not even, you know, I'm not even going to bother trying to get involved in that thing again. You know, um, if it does come about, it will come about naturally and organically through, you know, people maybe discovering me and that got shot going on. But obviously I'd love to go in there. But there's a lot of people going on there now who don't even live in Berlin. So that's pretty cool to see. So definitely you can see they've kind of done that. But I still like the fact that even though they're quite international, they still have a core to it where they represent the local scene. You don't have to you don't have to be originally from Germany to be on it, obviously not, but it's still representative of the local scene. And I actually like that. And I also like the fact that the programming is really diverse in terms of the genres of DJs. It's not just techno. Everyone everything under the sun, which is obviously not reflective, I feel like, of the city, personally. The city's mo you know, mostly techno, but then the hall does a good job of showcasing everything else outside of that. So a big up them for doing so. But this collaboration with Adidas, I feel like, I wonder if this might be the beginning of the end. Not too sure. In terms of what they mean and what the peer and the vibe and what the authenticity. Because I feel like as soon as, <laughs> this is a really weird thing, right? Example. But I feel like as soon as Broiler Room started doing Ray-Ban stuff, uh, maybe even Red Bull. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I think it was Ray Ban. So I'm thinking, or maybe Be 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 what's, what's, what's Ballantyne? Valentine? Is that Valentine's the same thing? Anyway, whatever. Whatever Boiler Rooms, let's let's just go with Red, Red, Red Ray Bans. Whenever Boiler Room started to have that relationship with Ray Ban, I feel like that's when Boiler Room started to go no, started to nosedive, and it never kind of recovered in terms of cultural relevancy. It's still very popular, but in terms of it being a thing that people want to go to, not so much. Like I remember going to again berlin again but i remember going to berlin one time for fashion week and going to a boiler room and seeing loads of scene people like actual scene people um and be oh this is actually a cool thing to go to right nowadays i don't think any scene person will be seen dead at a boiler room event because it's kind of you know a normally generic kind of genre you know person type of thing you know they did a collaboration with fucking jack moose you know what i mean it's becoming like just another promotional platform for you to kind of push your thing if you want to appeal to people that are into dance music or maybe you know get a hold of the gen z audience so i'm wondering if these sort of collaborations where you you know partner up with these big corporations or these big companies like adidas if this is either an opportunity for you to do what most underground niche people should do instead of selling out you should be taking that money 
from those equity corporations, doing that collaboration and then feeding that back into the grassroots, local, underground stuff that you're doing. It should that should be it. But selling out obviously is when you take that money and then you just forget about the people that kind of brought you up there and you just keep servicing the people at the top there because obviously the money's better. Um but obviously, you know, the reason why you got that money is because of what you did in the underground. But you know, it's, it's a common, you know, common flipping argument people have in terms of overground and underground. But I'm just I don't know if this is a sign or this is wherever they're going to use this correctly to kind of just keep propelling and magnifying what they're doing while still maintaining their core or if it's impossible anyway to do. Now, is, that, is that just a thing? Maybe it's impossible to do. Who knows? But anyway, this is courtesy of Hypebeast. It says, ADAS announces partnership with Techno Collective Hall Berlin. Um, it says as follows, ADAS announced a partnership with German music collective Hall Berlin, world-renowned for spotlighting the best up-and-coming talent in techno and wider world for electronic music. The group rise, uh, sorry, the group first, 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 first arose as a requiem to the club and streaming club closures seen across the globe due to the COVID-19 pandemic while the clubs and ambience certainly play a role in any live music experience founders Charlie and Ori who originally hail from Tel Aviv why do they do this in dance music by the way I, I, I just I thought about this when I was reading this just now why is this always a thing like to mention where you're originally from like even me I think I've got on my profile on SoundCloud like London based it's like why do I why do people write that like who cares where you're from really like someone wants to book you they'll book you it doesn't matter if you're from Timbuktu you know, if you're in the Philippines, if you're in Botswana, if you're in Honduras, it doesn't matter. If you're good and they like what you do, they're going to make a way to kind of get you out there. And maybe it's advantageous if you're in Europe because they can basically, you know, don't have to pay too much to get you in. It's further, it's closer, cool. But this whole like originally from, as if that kind of informs your musical, you know, taste or it makes you a better artist where you're from, just like, you know, where you happen to be born. It's quite bizarre personally, but I don't know. Maybe it's a thing to kind of, you know, Maybe people f because we're all doing the same thing essentially we're all pressing the same cue and play button we're all kind of touching the same jog wheel in order to kind of differentiate ourselves make ourselves feel different and to kind of really kind of you know separate us from the pack instead of being really good at what you do and separate yourself from your skill and your craft just say you're london based right or whatever he identifies maybe that's the reason why i'm not really too sure but i've always thought again this is talking i'm speaking out loud because of myself also because i feel like i 10 times tend to do this also it's just like it's just a bit weird um but yeah who knows who cares let's continue uh Charlie and Ori, who originally hailed from Tel Aviv, sought to bring back the focus of the music itself by providing up-and-coming artists within marginalized communities a platform to broadcast their talents in what is now Horse Signature Neon Tile Cube, um, located in Vaux Park, Hassenheide Park in Berlin. And of course, you've got there, they just team up. Let's actually see. They've got a track here as well. Let's see. Hopefully, I don't get taken down for this, but there's a, there's a track here and a promo. Let's see what this sounds like. I, don't actually, I haven't actually heard this. Let's see if this is any good. Everything will be. Nice, take off the music before I get copyright striked. Nice, loving it, loving it. Uh, you got hoodies, you got these, um, you got the Pooh Shiesty mask, you got a pair of trainers that look a bit dead to be honest, in my opinion, but hey, it is what it is. And I wonder these, you know what, I, I don't mind these collections because if anything, these should be done more often. Where maybe, imagine Adidas already have. This probably is a thing. I'm thinking out loud again. Probably these sportswear brands have like, or Ada should have a small selection of clothing that could easily be kind of adapted by people in streetwear or whatever it may be. Like maybe a particular type of jacket, a particular type of pants, a particular type of shoes. And then you just get a brand to kind of plug and play, right? And to kind of edit certain things. So maybe there's a, you know, to kind of go through, maybe that is a good way to kind of push out collab so that, it's not a thing that kind of relies on you having to get the sign off from Adidas corporate overall. So, so the reason why I say that is so that you can do more like um, smaller niche type of projects and collaborations that aren't just always big corporate stuff. I wonder if they do that. I'm not sure if Nike ever do that, but that'd be a pretty way, good way to go about things. Or you have particular base models, maybe a particular shoe, maybe a particular type of jacket, maybe it's a windrunner, maybe it's a varsity jacket, maybe it's a particular type of rain jacket, and then you just kind of have people kind of, you know, add different stuff to it. Maybe they design different colours for it, different details, branding, whatever, but it's kind of the same sort of thing. And they can kind of twist it in their own sort of way. So you, so you can have a way for the brand to kind of collaborate with you, add to your clout, and also a way to kind of sell bits and bobs of that stuff and maybe get people in involved in the things that you're doing. Maybe, who knows? Who knows, who knows, who knows? Anyway, let's continue on. So you got that. 
And then we got um, earlier this month, um, Hall took to Instagram to announce that they would be hosting a special broadcast for the Adidas flagship store in Berlin, which will take place tomorrow at February 19th, which already passed. And the streaming event will be available to watch via YouTube and it's all about techno retro running, according to a statement by the German sports company. Stay up to date. Of course, that's what they're going to do. Let's see what the other, let's see who actually performed in that. I don't know what they did. Who, who actually was taking part in this performance and retro running um, event? I wonder if they had like a foot cam similar to that guy Hector Oaks, right? They had like a foot cam with someone just tapping behind the decks as they're playing. That could be an absolutely good thing, isn't it? Right? Let's see. This is this is the pit. Is this the post from the event here with them two wearing the the, the push ice tea mask here. Yep, we got their today's program live from Adidas DE. Um, is uh they had Soul Seek playing. They had a person called Bra who's that Bao Groupie. 90 Carmen Electro who I'm a big fan of who I get her discovered from Flipping Hall so Carmen Electro is absolutely amazing um, and the person called Cyclo who I'm not really too familiar with but that should be pretty hard um, have we got any clips from this it's from a day ago isn't it probably not got any clips so let's just check the Instagram and see what I want on the stories bit okay we've got Carmen Electro playing here as you can see probably on the YouTube let's actually see the sound of that is there any sound yeah there is <laughs> Yeah, I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at that in the slightest. I'm not going to lie. I'm not mad at that in the slightest. I'm not mad at this. Let's just turn it off. I'm not mad at the slightest. I've got limitation of tickets for Paris. But yeah, looks pretty cool. Not really mad at that. Let's go back to the collection itself. What does it feature? Does it tell us what they've got here? Oops, let's get off that. Ba -ba -ba -ba. So from what I can see here on the picture, if I get this up on the screen, we have... The Pooh Shiesty Balaclava mask type of thing. You have hoodies and you have what look like double knee track pant trousers type of things. And from my experience, not that great running shoes. I don't know what model of Adidas that is, but not the nicest, not going to lie. But still, maybe in terms of a raver, in terms of being out all day on your feet and getting your steps in, it might be a good um, shoe to wear. But I do like the fact that they've done something with such a small what well, relatively small platform i'd assume and kind of did something local in terms of doing in the flipping adidas berlin location is absolutely cool as well and obviously um having the core activation where they kind of handle that sort of stuff is actually great and kind of program the environment entire event they didn't push flipping david rodigan onto them or something right or whatever else you know like they, they just let them do their thing that's absolutely great i like all of that and i think this is right outside the studio also right they really do popularize where it is and it? it's not a lot of kind of you know i guess it's maybe they don't care maybe because they've got security but you know I, even i recognize i think that's near where the actual studio is this alleyway because i'm pretty sure i see djs who've played there before upload on instagram that they're around there so maybe it's a thing maybe they don't care maybe it's in a good residential area it doesn't matter but yeah the stuff looks does look pretty decent you've got the hoodie there and then you've got those kind of um they kind of look like a engineer what do you call them electrician pants right i think i got a pair as well it kind of looks similar to those in that regard but the shoes look a bit better in this outfit here but still you know it's it's decent it's decent enough it's good i like it i'm not too not i'm not too fond of shoes but i do like everything else about it and yeah i'm eager to see how they grow how it continues man like um i don't know if this is going to impact the brand overall going forward if this is a sign they're going to be selling out or if this is just a necessary part of the journey and you know the funds from this project also can go to kind of essentially paying for a lot more time a lot more runway because these things are, i'd imagine they're not cheap to run overall right um i don't know if they're booking people now they're paying people i don't know what the deal is but i'd imagine day-to-day -day costs and this type of thing are probably quite high so in order to maintain your long-term future you might have to do these little brand deals to kind of really kind of had the bills paid for the next few months and then continue to do all your nice cool underground stuff going forward but i do also like the fact that they don't really do many parties i feel like maybe it's just me because i'm not really checking i'm not really in berlin too often so i don't really know but from what i remember i don't really see them doing events too often i know they've got this thing they're promoting here in paris they're gonna do right They've got like a Paris event that they're kind of promoting here. Let's see what that says here. But I feel like they kind of do a good job to kind of keep the party somewhat cool and chill, not doing too many of them. So it says, stuck to announce that our first Paris takeover March 4th at Station Garden means uh, stay tuned for the lineup. So yeah, so they, you know, some here and there, but they don't go over the top of the parties, kind of keep it core. And so far, so good to them, isn't it? So big up Hall, big up Adidas for putting it together. And hopefully this doesn't mark the end and it's just the start of something really cool and interesting going forward. One can only hope. One can only hope. One can 